Have you ever wondered what a Kubernetes pod is? A pod is the smallest deployable unit in the Kubernetes object model. It represents a single unit in a running cluster and may contain one or more container sharing the namespace, network, and file system. Hello and welcome back to the Podman tutorial from Zero to Hero. My name is Giuseppe and I'm Senior Software Engineer at Amadeus. In this video, I'm going to explain to you a remarkable feature provided by Podman in order to get started with pods. We are going to learn how to build a pod using Podman, how to work with containers, and how to generate and use the Kubernetes YAML file. By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding on how to work with pods using Podman. So let's get started. Podman is a container engine that offers a remarkable feature of creating pods. Pods are similar to the Kubernetes pods. They provide a way for application to be organized and scaled within a Kubernetes cluster. Kubernetes API objects, such as deployments, replica sets, and stateful sets are used to manage them. Now let's dive into the commands you will be using during the first part of the tutorial. The podman pod help command is a lifesaver when working with podman. It provides a list of all available commands and options to use when working with pods in podman. Podman pod create with the flag name podman name command is used to create a new and empty pod. The podman pod ls command is used to list all created pods. Is its work the same way as the ls, ls stands for list, command works with containers. The podman psa pod command is used to list all the containers in the pod. You may remember that in the previous video, you learned how to list all containers in the system using podman. If you add the option pod to the command podman psa, you can list all the containers in the pod. In conclusion, pods in Podman provide an excellent way of managing containers and scaling applications within a Kubernetes cluster. With Podman commands, you can easily make, handle, and show list of pods. I switch back to the terminal and type the first command podman pod with the flag help. This command provides all available commands that Podman offers to manage pods. For example, create used to create a new empty pod, exist to check if a pod exists in the local storage, inspect displays the configuration of a pod, and start, stop, and rm are used to manage pods. According to the description, a pod is a group of one or more containers that share the same network, PID, and namespaces. Now I will create my first pod using the create command in podman. I run podman pod create and specify the name flag to make it easier to use other commands later. However, it's recommended to avoid using name flag and let podman assign a random name to avoid potential name collisions as mentioned in the previous video. The pod has been successfully created without any error in console. But how can I be certain? I can use the following command provided by podman to list all the pods created in my system. Podman pod ls. Perfect. I can see my new created pod in the list. It showed the status as created 11 seconds ago along with the specific pod ID and a name assigned. I can also see that there is one container inside the pod. Why is there only one container? Well, when you create an empty pod, Podman automatically adds an infra container. This container serves the purpose of holding the namespaces associated with the pod and allow Podman to connect other containers to the pod. This allows you to start and stop containers within the pod while keeping the pod running. The default infra container is based on this image, KACS 
jcr.io slash post. Unless specified otherwise, all pods will have a container based on this default image. So in summary, when you create an empty pod, Podman assigns an infra container to all the next space and facilitate communication with the other containers in the pod. To demonstrate this, I can use the command podman ps with the flag a to list all the containers in the pod and the flag pod to display the pod name. Here it is. You can see the container with the name k8c's jcr.io slash pose. Its status is created and it's associated with the pod. If I run the same command without the pod flag, I can see all the containers in my system, including the infra container. However, in this case, I don't know which is the name of the pod associated with the infra container. Now you have learned how to build a pod with Podman. Let's move on to the next step and add a new container to it. This will help you improve your skill with containerization. Specifically, we'll be adding the custom container image PDM Golang that was created in the part three of this tutorial. To add a new container to your pod, you will need to use the following commands. The first command, podman run, will enable you to run a new container image inside an existing pod. Remember to use the pod option to specify the name of the pod and the end, specify the container image name that you want to add to your pod. In addition to the run command, you can also use the start, stop and rm commands with both containers and pods. This will allow you to start, stop and remove pods and containers as needed. However, before using the rm command to remove a pod, it's important to stop it first. Alternative, you can use the force option to remove it without stopping it first. I switch back to the terminal and now I want to use the first command to run a new container image inside the pod that I created. Podman run with the flag pod with the name PDM Golang. Inside this pod, I want to run the container image that I created in the previous video, part three, called PDM Golang. Perfect. Now let me check it using the command podman ps with the flag a and the flag pod. Here it is, PDM Golang inside the PDM Golang pod. And here, because I haven't specified the name of the container, Podman assigned it a random name for me. Of course, inside the pod, you can also see the infra container. Let's use the command podman ps. Here they are, currently running. And if I specify the flag pod, I can see that they are inside the pod PDM Golan pod. I can work with containers using the normal commands like podman stop, specify the name of the container. Now I can see only the infra container running. I can start the container with podman start and the name of the container. I can try to remove it with the command podman rm, but because the container is running, I need to stop it first or use the force flag. Let me stop it and then remove it. I cannot see the container created by the image PDM Golang anymore because it has been successfully deleted. You will learn all these commands in part two of the Podman tutorial working with containers. Even if the container is inside a pod, you can use all the available commands to work with containers. Now it's time to learn the commands to work with pods. First, let's list all the pods with the command podman pod ls. ls stands for list. Then to stop the pod, I can try to use the command podman stop and the name of the pod. Wrong. PDM Golan pod is a pod, not a container. The command podman stop stops a container, not a pod. This is important. So to stop a pod, I can use the command podman pod stop and the name of the pod. 
Now it's working. To start it, well, podman, pod, start, and the name of the pod. Yes, it's running. And to remove it, well, podman, pod, rm, and the name of the pod. But first, I need to stop it. Perfect. As you can see, Podman provides similar commands to work with containers and pods, like start, stop, ls, and remove. But with pods, you need to specify the keyword pod before the actual command, like podman pod start, stop, ls, and remove. One of the most fascinating features of Podman, which also happens to be my favorite one, is the ability to generate the Kubernetes YAML manifest from the Podman pods that can save developers a lot of time and effort. A Kubernetes YAML manifest is a file that contains instructions for Kubernetes on how to create and manage things such as pods, deployments, services, config maps in a Kubernetes cluster. The manifest file contains important details such as which container image to use, the environmental variables, volume, and how things are related to each other in the cluster. The process of generating the Kubernetes YAML file from Podman is quite simple. You just need to use the following commands. Podman generate cube and the name of the pod. Podman generate cube, the name of the pod, and append the result to a YAML file. Imagine that you have a Kubernetes YAML file that defines a pod and container that you want to use on your local Podman instance. This can be a useful feature when you want to test your Kubernetes configuration locally. Podman provides an easy command to achieve this, which is podman play cube. This command creates a new pod based on the Kubernetes YAML file provided. Once the pod is created, you can interact with it. This allows you to test the functionality of your Kubernetes configuration locally before deploying them to your production environment. I return to the terminal and now I want to create a new pod named PDM Golan Pod. At the same time, I want to create and run a new container image inside the pod. Mapping the port 8081 to the port 80 to of the container, I can achieve this using the new keyword. Let's check it using the command podman pod ls. Yes, my new pod is listed. Next, I want to check the container. Great, I can see my new container created and running with the correct port mapping inside the PDM Golan pod. Of course, I still have the infra container. Now, I want to generate a Kubernetes YAML manifest from the PDM Golan pod using the command podman generate cube. Here it is, the Kubernetes YAML manifest created by Podman. The YAML manifest follows the V1 specification and defines a pod named PDM Golan pod. It also includes the section related to the container image inside the pod. The container image is PDM Golan with the specified name and port mappings. I have two options. I can copy the content and add it to a file or reuse the podman generate cube command and append the output directly to a file specifying the file name such as pdmgolang.yaml. Let's check the content. Yes, everything looks good. Now let's imagine that I don't have a pod named pdmgolangpod. So let me first delete it. Perfect. I am ready to create a new pod based on the previously generated Kubernetes YAML file. To do this, I can use the command podman play cube, specifying the name of the Kubernetes YAML file. This will create a new pod with the same characteristics as the previous one, including a container running from the PDM Golang image with the correct port mappings. Once the pod is created, I can interact with it just like any other pod. This allows me to test the functionality of my Kubernetes configuration locally before deploying them to the production environment. It provides a convenient way to validate my configurations. 
Now let's check it using the command podman pod ls. Yes, I can see my new pod created and running based on the Kubernetes YAML file. Thank you for watching the fourth part of the Podman tutorial. I hope that you find this tutorial helpful for your containerization journey. In this part, we have covered how to create a pod using Podman, how to work with container inside a pod, and how to generate the Kubernetes YAML file. Stay tuned for the last part of the tutorial and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos. Thank you again and see you soon.